Hi, welcome back to my channel. In this particular video, we're going to look at how to sketch the graph of a quadratic function. So let's just get right into it. Now, um, so we have a series, we have a series of problems that we need to first of all answer, right? And um, I'm ranging from first of all finding the quadratic part of this um, of this function, and then we need to find a self-agent transformation from there diagonalize the transformation and find the principal axis and so on and so forth. So let's just get um, right into the problem. So the first thing is that we need to determine what is our quadratic function. So um, we eliminate, basically what we do is we eliminate all the other terms that are linear, right? So the only term where each of the terms has a degree of two, and that's, that's what we pick for our quadratic function. So basically the quadratic part of this is just mainly this. And this is what we're gonna, this is what we're going to transform into a new coordinate UV, right? So uh, we need to go into a way to rewrite this in terms of UV. So we, that is the process we're going to follow. Now in writing the quadratic function, now that we know that this is a quadratic function. The next thing is to write it in terms of vectors and matrices. So we can write this in this form. Now we need to understand what the entries of this matrix is. Now the first entry would be, so just think about this um, as the coordinates for the entry. So where, when we multiply X and X, we have X squared. So this will be the coefficient of X squared which is 11. Also, this will be the co coefficient of y squared, which will be four. Now in the middle, we have x times y, which is x, y. We also have y times x here, which is y, x, which is x, y. So all we need to do is just to divide this coefficient by two so that we have minus 12 here and also minus 12 here. And that is it. So basically when we multiply this vector with this matrix and this vector, you'll get the left-hand side. So they're they are equal. Now from here, we kind of see that we can write this as um, as a transformation, right? So we now defined a new transformation T, which is from R square to R square. Basically, you can see this is two by two matrix, such that the matrix of transformation, so that the um, such that this um, the matrix of transformation would be this, and this is relative to what standard basis, standard basis for R square. So what I mean by standard basis here is just um, one, zero, zero, one. Relative to this, this would be um, such a matrix for a transformation, all right? And I think this makes sense, okay? Now, now that we have this, the next thing is we just need to diagonalize this transformation. So that's the next step. So the next step is let's diagonalize, diagonalize T. All right, so let's look into that. So diagonalizing this, what you need to do is to find, first of all, find the characteristic polynomial. So, so this is called the characteristic polynomial. Okay, and this is given as the determinant um, of this um, matrix relative to standard basis minus T times identity matrix. And this is given as um, just subtracting T from the diagonals of the matrix. Okay, now I've already, um, I've already done several videos on how to diagonalize the transformation. Make sure you watch those videos as well. Um, the link to the playlist is down below in the description. So make sure you go ahead and watch those videos to get yourself grounded on how to find, on how to diagonalize a matrix. Okay, so let's just finish this one off. So determinant of this is just when you multiply the diagonals, um, multiply this diagonal minus the other diagonal. So we have 11 minus t times four minus t minus um, minus 12 square, right? So that gives us um, 44 minus um, 15t plus t square when we expand this, and then we have minus 144. So this comes out as minus 100, okay? Now you need to factorize this. That's the first thing, that's the thing that we always do whenever we um, find this determinant of this matrix. So now um, basically this is 
factorizing the quadratic expression. And um, all you need to do is to multiply the coefficient of t square and the constant one, which is minus 100. Find the factors of this in which when we add together, it gives minus 15. And that will give you the combination. The right combination will be minus 20 and 5. So therefore, the factorization of this is t minus 20, t plus 5. Now, the next step from here is to find the agent values which is basically the root of this polynomial, okay? So when we make equate this equal to zero, so that means t minus 20, t plus five equal to zero, which means the agent values would be minus five and 20. Okay, now that we have this, we need to then find the solution to the agent spaces corresponding to the agent values. So um, solution to agent spaces. So that will be the next step. So what we need to do is to check when t is minus five. So remember the matrix 11 minus t, minus 12, minus 12, four minus t, that's what we're gonna substitute into. So 11 minus, minus five, that is, um, so we have 11 minus minus five. So let's just do this first one. We have minus 12 here, minus 12 here. We have four minus minus five. So this is what we have. Um, so, and this gives us, um, 16 minus 12, minus 12, nine, okay? Now, this is just the coefficient matrix of a, um, of, of a homogeneous system, okay? So what this means is um, we can write this as 16X minus 12Y equal to zero. I remember we're looking at this, if this is the coefficient matrix, so we're looking at this for the variable X and this part for the variable Y. So, which means we also have minus 12x plus 9y equal to zero. So we need to solve this system. So all you need to do is just divide um, by four here because four is common to the first equation. And that is to give four x minus three y equal to zero. Divide the second equation by three, you have minus four x plus three y equal to zero. Both these equations are the same, just the difference in sign. So therefore, when we solve four x minus three y equal to zero, this will give us four x equal to three y. And we can solve x in terms of y as this. So which means our solution system it is basically x is 3y over 4, and y is a free variable. So we can take y out. So to make this is a fraction, so um, we don't want fraction fractional vector. So all we just need to do is just to multiply true by 4. So we multiply by 4 and divide by 4. You'll notice that this is what you have. And then this four now multiply inside. So we have y over four times three times four. So we use this vector. So this is still fine. So y over four is still a, a variable in terms of y. So we just know that what the, the agent space corresponding to this agent value will be spanned by the vector three, four. But now remember that, um, what we are looking for is for the principal axis, we are looking for autonormal agent vectors, okay? So we need to autonormalize this, um, this vector three, four. So what you do is you basically divide the vector by the length of the vector, which is, which is over five, which gives us three over five, four over five. So therefore we can write this as, this is spanned by three over five, four over five. Okay. So we are done with this first agent, um, agent vector. So let's move to the second one. So the second one would basically, um, when T is 20, what does that do? Again, we substitute um, 20 into um, the matrix. Remember 11 minus t minus 12 minus 12, four minus t. So that's four minus 20. And this gives us minus nine minus 12, minus 12, um, minus 16, okay? Now this is the homogeneous system. So the homogeneous, the homogeneous system corresponding to this coefficient matrix would be minus nine x minus 12 y equal to zero, minus 12 x minus 16 y equal to zero. Okay, now um, 
So what we do next is we, we simplify like we did before. We see that three is common here. So this becomes minus three X minus four Y equal to zero. The same thing here we have four is common. So divide through by four, that will give us minus three X minus four Y equal to zero. So which means they're actually the same equation. So when you, when you just look at one of them, it just gives us three X must be equal to minus four Y. So when you take this to this side, you have three X equal to minus four y. So which means x is minus four y over three. Again, the solution set for this particular one would be minus four y over three, y is a free variable. So when you take y out, you basically have this. All right. Now, <clears throat> now again, we don't want fractional um, fractions in our vector. So what we do is multiply by three, divide by three, you can basically see that, which means when we take this three in, we have y over three minus four, three here. So which means um, the agent vector we have corresponding to this agent value will be spanned by this minus four, three. Again, we autonomize this vector, which will now give us minus four over five, um, three over five, okay? So all we did, all we did is just divide this vector by the square root, the length of the vector, right? Which is just um, three square, right? So that's how we get uh, minus four, three over five, okay? So anytime you have a vector, you wanna find the unit vector corresponding to that, all you need to do is just divide the vector by the length of the vector. Okay, and this is what we've done. So now we can basically um, go to the next stage of this problem solving process, which is now that we have the agent vector. So the agent vectors minus 520. Now, I mean the agent values, sorry. So the agent values we have minus 520, and then the agent vectors, we have what? Um, so let's just step back. We have three over five, four over five, and then we have minus four over five, three over five. Now the metrics, the diagonal metrics corresponding to this um, autonormal basis, so this is autonormal, autonormal basis for transformation. Now, um, the metrics correspond to this diagonal matrix would just be uh, the metrics corresponding to where the diagonals would be the agent values. So this is what we have. Okay, now that we have this, uh, basically, this agent vectors would be the principal axis for the new coordinate system, okay? So let's take um, note of this. Now let's move back up. Let's move back up, okay? Um, and realize that all we've done is to rewrite this phi of x, y, okay? So all we've done so far is, now we are, we are shifted to a new coordinate system, phi of u, v, where instead of writing this in terms of this new, instead of writing in terms of this old transformation relative to standard basis, now we're now writing, writing this in terms of the new transformation, um, the, the new matrix of transformation, which is a diagonal matrix, right? This is all we are doing. So phi of x, y will now be, um, equal to phi of uv in the new coordinate system because this matrix is representing the same transformation, right? That we have here, okay? All right, so now what does this give, give us? It gives us minus five u square plus 20 v square. Basically use the same technique that we used before, right? When you do this, you know that the coefficient of what? U square will be minus five. The other entries are zero. And we also have the entry for what the v square, which is 20. Okay, now that we have this, um, remember that the whole function that we have consists of what? 
um, we, we still have plus 6x plus 8y, and we need to accommodate for that, okay? Now, how do we do that? We just need to be able to transform the new, the old coordinate to the new coordinate, right, completely. So how do we represent a vector in this coordinate system by a vector in this coordinate system? So what basically happens is any vector in this coordinate system can be written as what? X, Y, right? And this is basically X E1 plus Y E2. Remember your E1 is the standard basis for the old, um, for the transformation, right? Right, for the old matrix of transformation. For the new matrix of transformation, which is this one, we can now write it as what? UV, which is, so the same vector will be corresponding to a new vector in terms of the new coordinate system, which is UV, and this can be written as what? U F1 plus V F2. Now, don't forget your F1 would be the principal axis, and these vectors in the principal axis um, that we got, which is um, um, some steps down the line, and we spoke about this earlier on. So let's just go and find those vectors. Okay, these are the vectors, right? Three, five, four, five, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's let's bring them back here. So F, um, so the matrix is what three over five. So this is the principal axis. Three over five, four over five, um, minus. Um, I think minus four over five, three over five. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, so let's just check one more time to make sure um, we, are, we are right. Okay, so that's correct. Now, um, this is our F1, this is our F2. So this would form the, um, these vectors would form the direction of our principal axis for the new, um, for the new um, coordinate system. And you're gonna see that in a bit when we are sketching the graph of the, quadratic function. Okay, so now what this says is x e1 plus y e2. So now we are trying to find out how to write a vector um, in one coordinate system by another vector in the second coordinate system. Okay, so x e1 plus y e2 should be equal to u. Now what is f1? Now f1, don't forget, is this. And F2 is this. Now, what we need to do is to be able to compare X and U, all we need to do is to write this vector in terms of E1 and E2. And it turns out that this is just three over five E1 plus four over five E2. So we know this because this is the um, vectors for, um, for the standard basis, right, for, um, for R squared. Okay, so, and the next one is minus four over five E1 plus three over five E2. Great. So what happens next? Uh, we just simplify, we, we collect like terms and uh, in terms of E1 and E2. So when you do that, you see that what your E1, um, this is the first term that has E1, which is three U over five. And we also have another term here that has um, E1, which is minus four V over five, okay. Um, the same thing we do for E2. Um, the first time here is U times four over five. So four over five U. And then the second time will be V times three over five plus three over five V. Okay. And this is E X, X E1 plus Y times E2. Now, when you compare this, you can basically see that what your X would be this and this would be your Y. So we can basically write that. So this is how we convert from one coordinate to the next coordinate. Um, so this is three u over five minus four v over five, and y would be four over five u plus three v over five. Now this is extremely important, and we're going to use this to rewrite our quadratic form. Okay, so let's basically do that. Now, from the initial problem, now we need to do this before we sketch the function. So this is why this is very important. So the initial function that we have, 
which is um, um, what we have right here. So 11 X square minus 24 XY. So let's, so let's move to the right. Um, so let's move this a little bit so that we can, we can write that. Okay, so let's use the space. So um, initially we have 11 X square minus 24 XY plus four Y square. Then we have plus six X plus eight Y equal to minus 15. Okay, this is what we have. Now we have transformed this part, okay? And when we transform this part, as you can see on the le left hand side, it became minus five U square plus 20 V square. Now what is remaining is six X plus eight Y equal to minus 15. Now we know that our X is three U over five minus four V over five. And we know that our Y, so this is what we need to do next to substitute these values of X and Y into the initial equation. So this one is four over five U plus three V over five, and this is equal to minus 15. So let's, we need to simplify. We need to, do, we need to do a little bit of work here. So this is plus 18 U over five minus 24 V over five. Then we expand, we are expanding the brackets. So 34, 32 U over five plus 24 V over five equal to minus 15. Okay, so we can see that what this basically cancels out. And what we have left is plus 20 V square, then 18 U over five plus 32 U over five, that is 50 U over five, okay? Right, so let's just double check that. Okay, that's correct, equal to minus 15. Now, let's simplify 50 over five is 10 minus 15. Five can go through, so divide by five, so we have minus U square, uh, plus four V square plus two U equal to minus three. Now let's move everything to the other side, to the right hand side. So that will give us U square minus four V square um, minus two U minus three equal to zero. Okay, now this is the graph that we need to sketch and we fairly understand how to sketch this type of graph. Now this is a little bit new, type of function. So what we do is because we have u squared minus two u. So the first step that you would, you would take to, to make this thing, um, to make this function look like what can be sketchable is to first of all, um, um, so what we do is we make, um, so um, is this, we use this principle whereby um, we kind of, um, you. So, so what we do is we make this we make this into a square, which is we complete the square. All right, so that was what I was looking for. So we just complete the square, which is u minus. So we divide the coefficient of u by two, which is minus one square. Then we subtract the square of this number, right? Which is square of minus one is one. So we subtract this. So this whole thing is just the same thing as what u square minus two u. Then we have minus four V square minus three equal to zero. Now what this gives us is U minus one square minus four V square minus four equal to zero. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So what this finally um, goes to is four. Now, when you have an equation of this nature, you already know this is gonna be hyperbola. Right? Why is hyperbola? Hyperbola is of this. Um, so this is the general equation of of a hyperbola. So when you have minus b square equal to c. So when you have an equation of this nature, this is an equation of hyperbola. Right? So this looks like that. So we're going to sketch it based on this. So now let's go ahead and sketch the function. Um, so. Uh, let's just take some time to sketch this. Okay, so let's say we have this. All right, good. So this is our initial 
x, y axis, okay? Now, notice that we are moving into a new axis. So let's just draw this, which is u. So let me make it thicker. So this is the u axis. And then we're gonna draw the, um, so <laughs> I'm terrible at, at sketching this. So just bear with me. Okay, okay, that, that looks fine. Okay, so this would be the V axis. Now they have to be 90 degrees because remember the orthogonal, like autonomous um, vectors. So this would be the direction for F1. Now you need to be careful. Remember your F1 is, um, I think three over four, um, three over five and four over five, right? So let's just double check. Um, let's double check that. So that's three over five, four over five, good. Three over five, four over five. So this is in this direction. So if you check um, this three over four, here will be four over five. So that's what it means, right? It's in this direction. And the other one is in this direction, which is minus three over five, four over five, right? So let me, let me check that as well for F2. Uh, minus four over five, sorry, three over five. So this would be in this direction, minus four over five. This would be, um, um, this would be three over five, right? So somewhere this would be um, three over five. Uh, I'm guessing, so. So let's just make sure, so minus four over five, here will be like three over five, if you may. Okay, so this will be the direction of F2. Later on, um, there are two ways to draw it. Say that you figure out where three over five and four over five is for you to plot the direction of F1 and also find um, minus four over five, three over five to also plot the direction of F2. So this direction of F2, or you can use the angle between, which we're going to calculate very soon, the angle between the two coordinate systems. Okay, now that you have this, now let's just plot this graph now. Okay, now, before we go into the, we know how a hyperbola looks. So hyperbola looks like this. Um, a hyperbola looks like this where we have these points where the, the function passes through the X axis, okay? Now we do the same thing with this. So all you need to know is when V is equal to zero, where would you, um, where would the function pass through? So we need to check that when V is zero, what happens? We have U minus one square equal to four, right? Because four V square will be zero. Now, which gives us u minus one must be equal to plus or minus two when you take the square root of both sides, and which means u is what one plus or minus two. Now, when um, when you um, when we take the first one, which means u is three, and u is one minus two minus one. Okay, so that means we are looking at three here in u axis, and um, so minus one would be very close here, minus one. So then we can now plot the graph that we are looking for, which is this, this is the hyperbola on this. So this would represent the function that we are looking at, this function. So this will be the sketch of this particular, um, for this particular problem. Okay, now that we are done with this, what is remaining is the angle um, basically the angle between the two coordinate axes, this angle. And it happens to be cosine theta, which, um, which, is, which is the inner product of what? E1, so which is the direction of the first coordinate. Um, E1 is the, um, is the vector along the X axis, as well as F1, right? The angle between them, you can see theta is the angle between those two vectors. So is the inner product. So, inner, so cosine theta will be the inner product of these two vectors, E1, F1. So which is basically one, zero, and then this one is three over four, four over five. 
Now, when you do this, this basically gives you three over four, okay? Which is one times, one times three over four plus zero times four over five. And that's how you get three over four. So which means theta is just cosine inverse of what three over four. And whatever you get um, would be this, I think this is about 53 degrees or so. Just double check to make sure that is correct. So that is basically what we are looking for in this problem to be able to sketch this graph by changing from XY coordinate system to a new coordinate system, which is UV, right? All right, so this brings us to the end of the video. Please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, this is the right time to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe right now. Much, many more topics and more interesting topics would be taught on this channel. And please feel free to send me any problem that you would want to see on this channel. I'll be more than happy to make a video on it for you. Um, click the bell button so that anytime I upload the video, you'll be the first to know about it. And please share this on your other social media channels so that other students like you would find this channel and find the content here helpful for them as well. So thank you to stay to the end of the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.